Alright, that is it for the editing of the construction part of this video. Let's shoot the intro. So this, this is my new desk. And I've gotta say, I absolutely love this thing. I've already logged like 40 hours on it editing this video. And no, that wasn't a slip of tongue. I've been editing the video on the desk because the desk is also my computer. Let me show you. So inside this drawer here with the funky cutout at the front is my entire video editing PC. Sure, it might leave a little something to be desired in terms of cable management, but that's a whole computer in there. Inside this drawer, I have room for future expansion. I plan on adding some sort of NAS at some point in here, or maybe just a bunch of racks of hard drives. Down here, I have just random computer accessory storage. Inside this drawer here, I have storage for all my lenses. And in this one, I have storage for all my camera bodies. And I also have a little USB charging hub so they can charge all my cameras while they're in storage. And that way, when I go to use them, they're all nice and charged. And then down here, just random camera accessory storage as well. Underneath the top of the desk here, I have my input surface. So keyboard, mouse, some USB ports along here. And then on this side, I have an SD card reader. Don't look too closely at this though, because honestly, this is just the cheap plastic one. I was planning on making a solid walnut one to go along with the desk, but I kind of ran tight for time on this project. So I'm gonna spin that off as a separate project. And you're probably gonna to wanna to get subscribed so you can see it. The entire top of the desk is made from solid walnut. Well, excluding this little ash accent strip here. And then the grain pattern from the top continues over the sides and these waterfall edges on both ends of the desk. Okay, so I think that's everything I wanted to show you guys. So why don't we hop over to the shop and I will show you exactly how I made this thing. Behind me here, we have all the wood that we need for this build. And normally I would walk you guys through the process of cleaning up the wood and prepping it. But I've done that in a lot of other videos and we've got a lot to cover in this project. So I think I'm gonna utilize a little bit of movie magic to clean up this wood and we can just get straight into the desk build itself. So you guys ready? Three, two, one. So it is now the next day. It took me about a full eight hours to clean up all this wood, but it's done now. So here's the conundrum. Originally, I was planning to glue this desk all up as one big glue up, but what I'm realizing is I don't have a saw that's capable of cutting an accurate miter in something that wide and thick. So what I'm actually gonna have to do is cut all of these individual pieces into the shapes I need and then glue them into that waterfall shape after the fact, which is technically possible, but I'm gonna have to be really, really tight with my tolerances, otherwise it's not gonna work. So, wish me luck. I am getting ready to cut each of these pieces on my miter saw here, but like I said, precision is important. So one way that you can ensure that you get a bunch of easily repeatable cuts is to use a stop block. Over here, I have clamped this piece of cedar two by six scrap in position and then butted up my walnut against it. And that way I know every piece will be the same size. Using my miter saw, I cut all the walnut to length. The pieces for the waterfall ends were 25 inches long and the pieces for the top were 72 inches long. And then over on the table saw, I cut the front reveal. After that, it was time to glue everything together. So as you can see, I have all the wood laid out here in front of me. And I've also clamped my router sled to the table just to act as a straight edge to make sure that everything is nice and aligned along that side where it's important. I applied a thick bead of carpenter's glue to each of the individual pieces, spread it out with my fingers, and then clamped everything together to let it dry. Once one side was done, I did the other before setting up to glue the top. All right, time for the big one. This is gonna be the hardest one. There's uh, quite a few little complications to this one, but I'm confident I can do it. Gluing the top was more challenging because of the length of the pieces I was working with. I used some two by fours as culls to keep everything nice and flat as the glue dried, but in retrospect, it probably would've been better to use some dowels or biscuits instead. Let that dry for a bit, and uh, hopefully that comes out pretty square. I just took the clamps off the desktop and it's looking pretty good, but it's uh, it's a little rough, so we're gonna clean it up on the drum sander back here. That's extraction, conveyor belt, power. Let's go. The drum sander is great for removing excess glue and evening out any small seams between pieces. 
So originally, I was going to attach these waterfall ends and then do the cabinetry underneath. But I'm quickly realizing that it's gonna be really hard to glue and clamp these waterfall ends in position without something underneath them to support them. So we're actually gonna switch gears, do the cabinetry, and then once that's in place, we'll come back and attach these waterfall ends. The first step of the cabinetry was just breaking down my plywood into smaller, more manageable pieces. After that, I started cutting the larger panels that would form the exterior of my cabinet. To make my assembly easier and my boxes stronger, I cut rabbits into the upright panels and cabinets. Because I'm lazy and I didn't feel like installing my dado blade, I cut the center channel out one blade width at a time. Alright, let's assemble these cabinets. Assembling the cabinets was a pretty straightforward affair. I applied some glue into my rabbits and dados, used a 90 degree jig in the corners to keep everything square, and then pinned everything together. I did the top and the middle stretcher first, and then I installed the bottom afterwards. Let's let this dry, and while it's drying, we'll make some drawers. Back over at the table saw, I started cutting my leftover plywood into four inch strips. These pieces would be the backs, fronts, and sides of my drawers. Similar to the boxes, I cut rabbits for assembly, as well as rabbits along the bottom to hold the drawer bottoms in place. Again, assembly of the drawers was pretty straightforward, glue it, Make sure it's square, nail it, and you're done. Now I just gotta do like four more of these, five more of these. How many more? Six all together. This is my second one, four more. I assembled the other four drawers off camera and then started cutting some quarter inch plywood that would be the bottom of all my drawers. I spent some extra time here making sure the drawer bottoms were a nice tight fit. By cutting the drawer bottoms so precisely, I was able to pressure fit them into position and force out any minor variations in how square my drawers were. Done, all right. Let's mount these things. Here I have the cabinet and the three drawers that are gonna go inside of it, and we are going to start mounting some slides. But before we do that, I gotta be honest with you guys, I don't love mounting drawer slides. It's really finicky work, and if you don't get it right, then the drawers don't function correctly. I've come up with a couple little systems that have really helped me over the years to kind of alleviate some of that stress, but it's, I don't know. It's still not something I really enjoy doing that much. So when you're installing the drawer slides, it's really important that they go in straight and level. So what I like to do is cut a block on the table saw that I know is nice and straight and use that as kind of a template. You're gonna mount that on there. You're gonna flush it up with the front of the box. And then you're going to drill some little pilot holes. And then the screw in position. So we're gonna set aside that template. We're gonna grab a different template and use it to place this next slide on the bottom. So this is actually a little bit of an unorthodox slide configuration. Normally the slides will be mounted on the side, but this is kind of a special drawer. So I'm trying it on the bottom. They do make undermount slides, but um, I'm gonna see if it works with just these. Now that the slides are mounted to the box, we can worry about how we're gonna mount them to the drawer. So I'm going to mark the center of the drawer slide on the face of the box. Now I'm gonna line up the middle of the slide with the mark. Then I'll use the square to measure out far, square it up back here. Now, with a little bit of luck, this should just slide in here. There, there. All right, perfect. After getting the first four drawer slides mounted, I went around and attached the other eight slides using more or less the same method. So here's the thing about veneer plywood. It looks great when you're looking at this side of it, but then when you cut it, you have a raw edge like this. So we are going to apply some edge banding to all of these raw edges to make them look like real wood or kind of close to real wood. Edge banding is a thin veneer of wood coated in a heat activated glue. You cut it to roughly the length you want, apply it in place using a hot iron and a lot of downward pressure, and then trim off the excess. There's a ton of different tools for trimming off the excess edge banding, but to me, nothing beats a simple razor blade. Just be careful not to cut your fingers. After you've trimmed off all of the excess, be sure to give it a quick sand to smooth out any rough edges. I had a lot of raw plywood edges to cover, so I spent the better part of half a day applying edge banding before I could move on to assembling the top of the desk. 
So this top can be divided into three pieces. You have your center piece here, you have your waterfall left, and your waterfall right. So I'm going to use a biscuit joiner to help with the alignment when I'm attaching them together. In order to do that, I need to make a couple marks for where my biscuits are gonna go that are the same on each piece. Using my biscuit joiner, I cut five pairs of pockets on each corner. The biscuits would help to keep everything aligned during assembly and would also add strength to my miters. That's heavy. That's really heavy. After that, I set up everything on my other assembly table and got ready to, well, assemble. Okay, so now we're gonna apply some glue. I'm gonna apply it first to the biscuits, a little bit in each one. Finally, I'm going to apply a good, healthy bead of glue the whole way around. Okay, now we're gonna try and flip this back in, which is gonna be a little bit tricky. The most important thing here is just trying to get all of the grain to line up exactly. Okay, now we're talking. All right, that's pretty good. So let's leave that to dry and then we will do the other side. That looks good, let's let that dry. Once the glue had dried, I set about screwing the cabinets in place. Not only would these cabinets add storage to my desk, but they also provided a lot of structural support for my waterfall ends. On the top side of the desk, I used my track saw and a jigsaw to cut out a small wire chase. This would allow any peripherals on the top of my desk to easily route their wires down to the computer drawer below. While I had the desk up at a convenient working height, I took the opportunity to apply a slight round over to all the hard edges. Given how accident prone I am, I don't think I really want a desk with a bunch of sharp corners. To conceal and help organize all of the wires at the back of the desk, I wanted to make a small valence. So I ripped two pieces of 6 inch plywood and then used some pocket hole screws to screw them together into an L shape. Not only does the valence keep my wires hidden, but it also gives me a discreet place to mount a power bar as well as all the power adapters for my monitors. Once the valence was mounted, I drilled out some holes for wire management. If you want nice clean hole saw holes, stop just short of drilling right through so that the pilot bit is poking out of your wood, then switch the opposite side and finish the hole from that side. That way you avoid any messy blowout. Next, I had to do another mini glue up to make the drawer fronts. I made them all as one big panel so that the grain pattern would be continuous between the different fronts. After a little bit of post glue up cleanup, I cut the big panel in half and then started cutting the 45 degree angles that would serve as the drawer holes. Okay, so now that the drawers and the slides are all mounted, we can mount the drawer fronts. And I'm gonna teach you guys a little trick to do that. First thing you're gonna do is pull out your drawers and drill your holes where you want your mounting screws to go. And then you're gonna screw your mounting screws in position so that they're protruding just a little bit. And line it up exactly where I want it. I'm just gonna give it a little tap onto those screws. And now I've got a bunch of marks where my mounting screws are gonna go. Once I had my mounting points figured out, I made a couple of little marks and then I cut up my drawer panel into three separate drawer fronts. And now, theoretically, mounting these drawer fronts should be as simple as lining up the screw tip with the existing screw hole. Let's see. Perfect. All right, let's do the other two. So I'm gonna start with the finishing process of this project. And I think it needs to be said at this point that this is gonna look a lot easier than it is in the final video. I don't think anybody wants to see me repeatedly applying coats and sanding, but this is probably gonna be a multi-day process, so you're probably gonna see my shirt change, you're probably gonna see the weather change. If you'd like to see a more in-depth video about how I do my finishing process, I'll include a link to one of my other videos right here all about how I do finishing. With that being said, let's get to it. So this is kind of an old can of finish that I've had for a while and there's some snots in it. So before I use it, I'm just gonna pour it through this screen to strain out any little contaminants or anything like that in it. A little piece of sheer fabric can save you a lot of hassle. 
When you're trying to cover this much surface area, you really only have two options. Either you roll it on or you spray it on, and I don't have a sprayer, so that basically sealed my decision. For all the hard to reach areas and tight corners, I used a brush, but I blended it out quickly with a roller while the finish was still wet. I did the main body first, and then while that dried, I did all the smaller components like the drawers and the drawer fronts. Between each and every coat, I sanded everything with 220 grit sanding discs. This helped to even out the application and also helps the next coat to adhere properly. While this didn't take the multiple days of work that I originally thought it would, it was still a full day of finishing before I got it all done. Alright, that is the fourth and final coat. We're going to leave this dry overnight and come back tomorrow and keep working. Okay, so this is where things get a little interesting. So in front of me, I have my computer, or at least all the components on my computer. So what I'm gonna try and do is mount all of this hardware in these two drawers. So in order to get that all to fit, I'm going to have to modify these drawers pretty extensively. I'm gonna have to do some cutouts in them. I'm gonna have to put some mounting points on them. So let's get into it. Using the motherboard itself as a template, I tapped out a bunch of holes and then screwed some brass motherboard standoffs into them. You can salvage these standoffs from an old computer case or just do what I did and order a kit of them off of Amazon. Around the front of the drawer, I cut out a small section that would allow the computer's radiator to intake air and cool itself. Uh, in order to transfer these mounting points to the front of the drawer, I'm going to use this little piece of tape. There's one, there's four. The back side of the drawer got a similar but smaller cutout for the GPU's radiator. I then test fit the GPU and once I was satisfied everything fit, I moved on to modifying a couple of the other components to make them more computer friendly. The quarter inch plywood that covers the back of the cabinets got a small cutout that allowed the computer power supply to breathe and be more easily plugged in. And then over on the table saw I made a series of linear cuts in it by raising the saw blade into the plywood. These cuts formed a grill that allows hot air to exhaust out the rear of the cabinet so the computer doesn't cook itself. Using a similar technique, I cut a grill into the front of the computer drawer. I did this largely freehand, so I covered the front of the drawer in tape and marked out all my cuts ahead of time as a guide. I was a bit skeptical that a grill this size would allow enough airflow to properly cool the computer, but after hours of stress testing, it seems to handle the job just fine. Finally, using a rat tail file, I cleaned up the slots and rounded them off. After that, I put everything back together with the computer assembled in the drawer. But this is the big test fit with the computer actually in it, okay? Oh. Drawer slides, oh yeah, look at that. Oh man, we are so close to being done, this is awesome. It's now the next day, hence the wardrobe change, and today we're gonna do a little bit of metal fabrication and make the legs for this. So I'm just gonna push the desk itself out of the way and grab my welding table. If you haven't seen my video on how I built this welding table cover, you can find a link to it at the top of the screen right now. I'd point, but this thing is way too heavy to carry one-handed. I started my leg construction by first cutting all the flat bar steel. I cut four pieces that were 16 inches long and eight that were two inches long. Next, I cut eight pieces of one and one quarter inch square tube steel with 15 degree angles on both ends. Okay, so we're gonna be making some pretty simple legs here, kind of uh, Scandinavian design inspired. Let's start tacking these guys together. But yeah, that's a rough outline of what the legs are gonna look like. Let's fully weld this one together and then we're gonna do three more. That's enough welding. Let's take these guys outside and clean up my ugly welds. I like to do most of my metal grinding outside because it tends to make a really fine black dust that just gets everywhere if you do it inside. It's a real pain in the ass to clean up. Okay, now that we got those all cleaned up, let's tap a couple holes in them so we can attach them to the box. Now, we're gonna paint these legs. Most of my computer accessories are black, so I figured some simple black paint would be the best finish for my legs. I sprayed on one coat of primer and then three coats of paint. Okay, all these legs are now feeling nice and dry, so let's take all this stuff home and assemble it. When it was all finally said and done, this desk weighed in at over 100 pounds. So when it came time to take it home, I had to call in some reinforcements. One, two, three. 
After a lot of struggling and a little bit of swearing, we got it inside and I set about installing the legs, all of the computer accessories, and finally, my keyboard tray. Sweet. All right, everybody, that's it for this project. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a little bit of a long one, so thank you for sticking with me. We had a lot of stuff to cover. If you'd like to support this channel, one of the best things you can do is just hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. It sends a strong indicator to YouTube that this is a quality video that it should show to more people. And I'm still in that early stage where I'm really trying to grow my subscriber base. So I would really, really appreciate it if you could get subscribed. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.